Welcome to another very special, special guest Saturday. Today we have Mr. Patrick Ruff, who joins us as the head of school of a small high school in Northern California to explain what quality coaching means to him and how he goes about finding it in the coaches he hires. Hey, Megan G here for Sportlight, and I am so excited to introduce you to one of my absolute favorite people in the world. The one and only Patrick Ruff has been a coach, teacher, assistant principal, principal, and now he's the head of school for a small private school in Portola Valley by the name of Woodside Priory High School. Patrick has been described as an administrator who genuinely cares and connects with his students, a dynamic leader who has a clear direction and commitment to both his students and staff. Patrick navigates even the roughest waters with dignity, clarity, respect, and compassion for all. This guy is the real deal and you'll know it the minute you meet him. Patrick, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks, Meg. It's uh, it's good to good to be with you. I'm not sure about that introduction. I think uh, my mother may have written that. That's uh, that. Those are the nicest words that I've ever heard. So, uh, but thank you. No, I appreciate that. It's uh, it's great work. Great work that we do. I have to admit that uh, both my kids have gone through Woodside Priory, so I'm kind of a fan, and I'm I'm a Patrick Ruff super fan. So, for sure. But. Um, unfortunately, my kids were not there when you when you were here. But we're so excited. To, to have you on the show and learn about um, all the things that you have to teach us from going from coach to head of school must have been an interesting um, path. You want to kind of update us a little bit for those who don't, <laughs> who aren't sure. fans sure. like yourself? <laughs> yeah, I, I actually think the two roles are, are actually pretty similar. Um, the, the, my, the, some of the best work I think I did, I, I found teaching a little bit later. I didn't, I didn't anticipate being a teacher as I was going through school. Uh, I went through college, uh, was a Chinese major actually in college and, and thought that's what I wanted to do, but spent a year after college in a volunteer program called the Jesuit Volunteer Corps and, and was exposed to teaching. So had this great experience of, of what can happen in a classroom. And it was really that that sparked my interest and then was lucky enough to, to find a teaching job down in Los Angeles at a, a Jesuit all boys school, Loyola High School, and literally from day one fell in love with the teaching. Um, really enjoyed <clears throat> working with a group of students, uh, taking them from, from kind of where they started, then having kind of a clear goal to where we wanted to go, and then just finding the ways to, to get to know them, motivate them, and, and allow them to, to learn and grow. Uh, also, you know, found my way into to coaching too. Down at Loyola, I coached both basketball and swimming. Um, and, and that was great. I was part of a great basketball staff and great swimming staff. I coached lower levels, but, uh, you know, was really part of a staff. And, and again, got to see kind of the organization that goes into, um, again, taking a group of, of students and then focusing in on a common goal and then working throughout, you know, in, in coaching throughout a season to get there. Um, and, and really, that's what I thought I was going to do for my whole life. Uh, but, but, you know, circumstances happen. And uh, I met this great woman who uh, I wanted to be with. And so she uh, made it pretty clear that she wanted to move back to the East Coast. So I followed. And, and you know, the only job I could get um, uh, that, that kind of worked for me was this kind of job of, of campus ministry and um, and so I did that at a Catholic school in, in Boston, and then just kind of kept putting in different spots, uh, filling different needs. So then I was an assistant principal, and then moved back out to San Francisco to become a principal, and then now down here to be a head of school. But but all the while, I think uh, it was it was those those lessons that I learned in those classrooms early, and and certainly in those early coaching experiences that really I think have prepared me. For, for the role and it's, and, and when it all boils down, it's not that different. Like we're still, you know, working with a group of people. Uh, we're trying to meet them where they are. We're trying to help them as they grow. And, and we all have this common goal that we want to get to. So it's, it's similar. And, and I've been blessed to be around some, some really good and smart coaches and, you know, have been able to kind of watch and learn from some really um, impressive people. So, um, and teachers too. Um, and but that's been really a, a, just a joy for me. It has really impacted who I am. I'm just curious too, because I know Patrick, man, I know obviously I gave Meg a hard time because she knows you 
you know, I myself and others aren't going to know you and be as familiar with you. What did you teach? And then uh, can you talk about that transition in, from coaching into more uh, education administration? Sure. Yeah. yeah. I taught theology. Uh, I was a theology minor. I went to Georgetown and, uh, and was a theology minor, um, a big Georgetown basketball fan, but you know, theology minor. So that's what I did. I, I taught theology um, for four years in Los Angeles and, and loved it, uh, loved every bit of it. Uh, it certainly fits with my values and, um, you know, allowed me to, I think, really grow and deepen my own faith too. Uh, and then again, you know, got the chance just because of some need and some interest and um, just to, to get into coaching. Uh, and, and that really, um, you know, made an impact on me, you know, too. Was able to translate that to Boston and, um, and got, you know, became part of a pretty good team you know, in Boston where we coached uh, swimming, um, very fortunate, you know, two state titles in, in our time there and um, Olympian Eric Vent uh, was on the team. So it's, it's pretty easy to coach when you have such great talent around. Um, but, you know, it wasn't just Eric, you know, that, that won our state titles, you know, it was very much of a team. And I think it's that, it's that recognizing that um, everyone needs to contribute and everyone has a role and allowing people to understand what that role is um, and how important that role is. Uh, you know, that whether it's a practice player, you know, just coming in to help with drills, you know, or if it's that person who's, you know, that third person on a relay, um, or if it's that person that's going to win two events for you, um, you know, or, you know, sink the winning free throws. It doesn't matter. Everyone's got a role and they all count and they all matter. Um, so I think that just making that transition from the classroom, um, just made a lot of sense. It was very simple. Priorities are, 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 are the same. And, and I think, you know, at least in education, the, the way I look at it is the, the court or the pool or the field uh, or the cross country course, it's really the last classroom of the day, uh, you know, when it comes down to it. Um, you know, the, the same values that we want our teachers to be giving our, our students are, are still present in in, in whatever sport we're, we're offering to. Um, and it's not necessarily about, you know, just like it's not necessarily about the physics, you know, it's about how the physics is taught. It's about how you, you work to meet the students where they are and you use the physics to really, uh, I think, teach values and character. Uh, and I think the sport is the same way. Uh, you know, it's, it, there's a lot of ways to teach a free throw. There's a lot of ways to teach, you know, the backstroke, um, but, but it's how you do it. And it's really looking at that as the vehicle to, to make a person better and to teach their values. We know, I know that very few of the, of the kids that you know, we coached or I coached you know, go on to do whatever it is for a living, uh, the sport for a living, but they're gonna do something for a living. And, and I think the values that they get from uh, the coaching, just like from the teaching are, are more important. I knew I wasn't gonna have a bunch of scripture scholars coming out of uh, this all boys school in Los Angeles but I was going to have, you know, these, these good men who are going to become, you know, fathers and they were going to become husbands and they were going to become, you know, people that work in our society. And, and that was really important to me. So whether they, they always remember what the first five books of the Bible are like that, that doesn't matter to me, but if they can remember that they have gifts and talents and worth and dignity and to see other people uh, in the same vein or the same light, that's what's important to me. And I think, and I think the sport is the same way. Um, you know, there's great lessons that we can learn in, in sport, whether it's hard work or teamwork or sacrifice. Those are the ones that make us better people. Uh, and I think that's what, that's the beauty of sport. And I think it's the thing that brings us all together too. I think that's the beauty of sport. You talk about, um, as far as the, the similarities between teachers and coaches, and how do you as, and, you know, at least with teachers, you have kind of a, they have to be, get their teaching uh, certification. And, and so they have a bare minimum, basically, of education that they need to know to be a teacher. How do you go about finding that in coaches when there's not a uniform um, certification process? Yeah, I, I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges that we face in finding, you know, quality coaches. And, and the coach, you know, has as much impact. I mean, I think about some of the coaches, you know, that I was lucky enough to work with, but certainly some of the ones that I had, um, you know, they had really big impacts on me uh, as a person. And our coaches do, you know, our, our, you know, up at St. Ignatius, where I worked for 11 years and, and had such a great experience, 
you know, our, our coaches would spend more time with them, with our, with our students than, than their teachers did. So in other words, like our football coach was with, you know, the, the, the athletes that he coached uh, longer than they spent with their English teacher. Um, and, and we're blessed to have a great football coach up at, up at St. Ignatius. Um, and, and we're fortunate that, but I think that's the hard thing because, you know, for the coach, um, it, it, you need both. You need to have good understanding of the X's and O's, but then you also need to have this good understanding of, of how I'm going to form, you know, these young people that I'm with every day. And, and that character formation piece, I think is, is so difficult to measure. Um, you know, we're lucky that the education system, you know, there's some great schools of education and there's been some great growth in, in what they teach and how they teach, uh, you know, and so parent people come out with some good experience, you know, but with coaching, you know, there isn't necessarily that, that same kind of, there's not a coaches, a coaching school of education or a coaching, you know, education school. So um, that's, that's challenging. That's really difficult. I, you know, I think, you know, for, for me, it's, it's really trying to like look at their body of work, talk to their players um, and then see kind of who they had as coaches, you know, what, what kind of system or philosophy did they come from? But, but really it's, it's important to see, you know, what they do and how they do it. And just to see that in play and in practice, it's similar to teaching. You know, we, we like to see a teacher teach. We certainly look at what they've done. Uh, you know, in the classroom, whether it's a demo or, you know, try and figure out, um, you know, where they've come from or, or who were their mentors. Um, but in coaching, it's really, it's, it's just challenging because there, there isn't a lot of oversight in that. And, and it can be really difficult. And someone that looks good, you know, may not have those values, you know, that are so important, um, you know, that we want our, our teachers to have, whether it's a Catholic school or any school. Have you, have you ever had a a whoops hire or oh some yeah. Red, oh, yeah some red flag eggs yeah oh yeah sure <laughs> that was quick sure oh yeah yeah well we've been doing this for a while so um i think we're better at it uh and and sometimes you know they they look good and we've had a we've had them both as a coach you know and you know in the classroom uh and sometimes things look better than they are and then the circumstances just change or boy, the, just the reality of the pressure is there and it just becomes, you know, challenging for that person. Um, you know, I think the, the bigger regret sometimes of, of, the, of the higher is, the, is, is sometimes the waiting, right? So in general, we like to kind of give a person a, a shot and a chance and, and maybe it's a second year and, and then sometimes, you know, that's just not there. So that's usually the bigger regret for me is, is waiting that second year or giving them that second, that second opportunity because, you know, for, for, you know, for me, it's, it's as the, as the, as the person, you know, the, the head of school or the principal, like I've got a lot of years there, but for that, for that student or, or, or that, that person who's participating in the, in the sport, that athlete, they, they only get one year, right? So maybe that was their senior year, or maybe that was their junior and senior year. And that could really alter and affect someone. Uh, and not because they're not going to go play in college, because if they're good enough, you know, the college is always going to find them. Um, or, or, the, or the pros or whatever, but it's more of the lessons. It's more of the, it's more of the, what they get from being around a person like that, that is just so important. And I think, you know, when we miss out on those opportunities, um, that's, that's the real, that's the real shame. So I think, um, so being, I think, I think, and I think we're better at the hiring. I think we're just, we're more comprehensive. We're, we're, we just have longer and better processes in place. Um, and, and I think, you know, I've just got a better network, which is helpful, um, but, and I think we can ask better questions. We learned kind of to ask, you know, some, some better questions about philosophy and, um, and really kind of getting an experience and understanding kind of, you know, their own school of thought, but boy, it's, it's, that, it's that waiting too long that's the, the tricky one. It must be more difficult too, because the, the school you were in before was kind of a, a sport powerhouse in that area. And so it probably, you were able to attract more um, talent. Is it, is it more difficult in a smaller, more academic focused environment? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question, Meg. I, you know, you know, I'm, I'm newer here, so I don't know. Uh, I, I do know uh, we have incredible facilities here um, at Woodside Priory. The, the campus is uh, spectacular. We have some room to grow in terms of some of our athletic facilities. They need some updating um, and, and we'll certainly look at that. But in general, we have really good facilities. Um, and then in general, you know, 
I think our kids, our students, you know, I think they're hardworking uh, and they're very smart. You know, they may not have this, you know, necessarily strong desire or maybe they, they, they may not come to Woodside Priory because, you know, of, of an athletic experience that they're looking for. But I also think that they, um, our students are smart and hardworking. And I think, you know, when we have smart and we have hardworking and we have discipline and then we have good facilities, you know, I think, you know, that's an attractive place for a coach. Um, we also have a very clear mission and a clear charism. So, you know, our students come, you know, as pretty, they're pretty good. So I think, you know, as a coach, when you can give someone, you know, the opportunity to be at a place where there's really good facilities, you know, and then you have some really good uh, students, and then there's some really good support, whether it's, you know, parental support or school support, you know, I think that's a great recipe to begin to attract um, great coaches. You know, we're, we're so thrilled here at, at Priory. We have an excellent athletic director and, um, you know, he's been doing it for a long time. So, you know, he's really got a good understanding of what it's like here too. So um, I think that is the, the recipe. I think for us, it's just going to be um, just being thoughtful and, and being patient. And then, and then also though working towards goals. Um, and part of the goal is, you know, not necessarily, we don't need to win, you know, 22 state championships every year. Um, but I think it's that goal of being excellent and excellent doesn't always mean, you know, a perfect season. I think it's excellent in terms of putting out effort and it's excellent about putting out, you know, a product that you're proud of, um, and putting out, you know, the, the, you know, the giving the experience to our students when they can grow, um, you know, some of the best seasons, you know, that, that I've been a part of were, were losing seasons, um, and, and just because the students worked really hard and we knew we got as much out of them as we could. Um, and even though we didn't win, it was just incredibly satisfying. And then some, some of those seasons that we were really good at, you know, where we even won or didn't lose, you know, they were really tough because there was just so much pressure and just wasn't as fun until ultimately winning. But, but there was a lot of pressure and it was difficult. So, um, but I think, I, I think really being mindful and attentive to that and kind of creating that kind of environment where excellence is the is the name of the game. I think that's what's gonna that's what's gonna attract the coaches. And and then when we get the right coaches, and then and it just becomes cyclical, right? Our our facilities will continue to improve. We'll get more students. And and again, we're not looking to be uh, you know some sort of an NBA factory here, um, but we're looking to be a, a place where you know students can learn and grow and become better people. Thanks for joining in to Sport Report. Before you move on to part two of our conversation with Mr. Patrick Ruff, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. We want to hear from you. No need to wait. Part two is already waiting for you. So take a listen.